Hello friends, Jermaine here and in this new video series we're going to be exploring the Angel Dart framework. So Angel is a backend framework and is written by a student called Toby. With this framework what you get is, aside from a command line interface that you can use to bootstrap your applications, you can also install it directly and it gives you features like hot reloading, it's got GraphQL support as well and other features you can get with it is also server-side templating you can use it for web sockets you can use it for authentication and much more all right let's get started so here's what we're going to be building we're going to be building a blog cms which will manage a list of articles it looks like that at this point no articles have been added so let's go and add a new one and then at this point you can enter the details i suppose content this content area also supports markdown such and then i will submit that at which point we get a successful message and then we can click to view the actual article any articles added now gets populated here you can go to the full article i can make edits such you can change the title for instance and update the slug and when I hit submit, we get success, and then we can view the updated article, which includes the updates made to the slug. I can also delete this article, which shows a confirmation dialog pop up. If I cancel, nothing happens. If I accept, then it deletes it and it redirects here. And we know it's deleted because we get the default message. There's also going to be search functionality, which will be implemented at a later time, but this is pretty much the gist of what we're going to be building. Okay, so we're going to start off by using Stagehand to bootstrap a console-based application. And once that's done, before we run pubget to update our dependencies, let's add the dependencies we need for the Angel framework. So I'm going to come to dependencies, enable this, and I'll add a couple of dependencies. So the first one is the angel framework so that contains the core server library and there are some other libraries you can use like angel trial which is a server-side templating engine that we're going to be using with angel there's also angel static for creating static file servers and last but not least we are going to use the angel hot library and that would give us hot reloading support once this is done i'll save this file and then we can run pubget to update our dependencies. It's angel gil 2.0.0 we need. So let's run pubget again. And once we have that installed, we can come to bin main.dart and on top of the default import, we are going to import a are going to import our angel package. So we need to import the angel framework and then in our main function We'll delete this stuff and we'll create our angel application and then we'll create our http server by importing the http library from the angel framework so here we can do angel http and then we'll pass in our angel app instance and from here we can http style server or local host and we'll give it a port 3000 and just need to make sure you mark this as async so let's try running this and see what we get and if I visit the browser we get a empty response because we've not configured anything to be returned so we can configure some routes so we can do app.get and then in the callback we get the request object and we get the response object so we can can write out our response and that should do so let's restart our server reload and there we go we got hello world let's enable hot reloading to save us from manually restarting the server whenever we make changes so i will make a couple more imports so let's import the angel hot library once we've imported our angel hot package we can start by creating an instance of the hot reloader class so this hot reloader class takes in two arguments 
first argument is a callback function and the second argument is a list of directories that we'll be watching for changes. Whenever we make changes in the directories we have in this list, this whatever we've defined in here will be invoked again, will be run again. So that means we can move this code in here and we just need to return our app instance. So from that, we can create our HTTP server by doing hot dot, essentially doing this. So we can do hot dot start server, localhost, and everything else remains the same. And then we can just print out, we can print out a simple message. And then from our HTTP server object, we can grab the server address. Then we do the address again. And then let's log out the port as well. Okay, so save this. So now let's just check and ensure that our server still runs. And this is a future. So we need to await on that. So I'll save that and I'll try again. Okay, there we go. And we'll take a look in our browser. And we still get hello world. A couple more things we need to specify the directories we want to watch for changes in order to test whether this is actually working. So let me kill this. And then to specify the directory, we need to pass in directory objects. So what that means is we will import the dot IO library and then in here we can use the directory object so we're going to watch lib directory this one here that should do so i'll launch this again by doing dart and we need to pass in the observe flag so that's for the dart executable and then we'll specify our main.dart file that should be it let's ensure it's still running the server still works okay the server still works and then to actually test this, we will come to the lib directory, we'll add a new folder, and then in here, we'll create a routes.dart file. And once it's added, we see a notification here saying routes.dart changed, and then it proceeds to reload the server again. So if I go to the browser and I reload it, it still works. So let's move the configuration of our routes from this file to our routes.dart file. I'll come to routes.dart and then I'm gonna make some imports. We'll import the angel framework. From here, what we'll do is we'll create a function called configure server. So this function will take in an angel application instance. And from that, what it'll do in here is it'll configure, it'll set up this route. So I'll cut this from here and I'll paste this in here. And once we've pasted our first endpoint, our first route in here, I'm going to come to simple block CMS. I'll get rid of that. And then we can import our route file that we just created. And in here, we'll create a function which returns a feature called configure server. And even before that, let's import the angel framework. Then in here, our configure server takes in an angel app instance We'll mark this as a sync and then we'll await while we call the configure method. Here we're going to be configuring our routes that we've defined in here. So let's use an alias for this as routes and then let's do routes configure server. Okay, so let's save this and make sure you save the changes made in routes.dart as well. And then our server should be reloaded and then we'll come to our main.dart file and then because we've imported this file already, mark this as a sync and then we will import the configure server function as such. So let's save this. And because we've not, we're not watching this file for changes, I can just click in the terminal and hit R to manually reload the server. And let's go back to Firefox and let's reload. And yeah, everything seems fine. Let's get rid of this HTTP import since we're using hot reloading. Looking at the documentation, however, it's recommended, seems to be recommended that we use a closure for defining our server configuration functions. So what that looks like is using the angel configurer type definition, our configure server now comes a function which returns another function. So it looks like that. And then we will be able to come to this file and then invoke this as such, which returns the 
virtual return this function. So the reason why we'll do something like this is because in a later video, we'll create a file server object, which we can pass in here. Okay, so I'll save all these changes. And then our server should reload itself. And then we can come here and then yeah, once I reload, everything else should remain the same. At this point, I think it will be useful to enable debug mode in VS Code. So let me kill this server, come to the debug tab, and then add a configuration for dot. And then in our configurations, we'll add a new option and we need to pass in the observe flag. And I'll just rename this to development server. Save this file and we should be good to go. So that means I should be able to hit F5 on my keyboard and then that runs the development server. I can look at my debug console and it should see you should see the same message being logged here. All right, and let's test the hot reloading functionality. So if I make a change here and I save, yeah, there we go, it still works. So the next thing we need to do is to configure our templating engine create another file in here we'll call it config dot dot and then in this config dot dot file we'll import the angel framework secondly we will import the angel gil package lastly we'll import the file package so this file package comes installed when we install the angel static package and then we'll do what we did to our routes and then in here now, we are going to define a file system object, which will be passed in here. We will return our closure. We'll mark this as async. And then what we want to do is to call await and we'll do app.configure. And then as an argument, we'll pass in our templating engine configuration. So there's a JL function we need to invoke. And this JL function takes in a directory so we we'll just say file system, we'll call the directory method and we'll specify the directory we want to use. So in here, we'll use the views directory. Now just close this off. So let's save this. And then we need to come to simple blog CMS and let's import the file we just created. Config, that's config. And then we'll repeat this bit and we'll say config. And it's expecting a file system object which we can grab from the file package. Actually, we want the local file system. So we'll import local dot dot, and then we'll pass in a reference to the local file system. Okay, that should be good. And let's save all our changes. And to test that our configured views directory is working, I'll come back to the root of this project. We'll create a new folder, we'll call it views. And in here, we'll create a new file. We'll call it layout.jl. We'll create a HTML5 document. Let's first set the type to HTML. Okay, let's add a heading one and say hello from Jail. Then I'll save this file. From this, we should now be able to come to our main.dart file. Sorry, not our main.dart file, our routes. And rather than doing res.write hello world, we can do res.render and then we'll render the layout template. And I think I've got too many parentheses. Okay, so let's save this and then let's go to the browser. And when I reload, it says hello from JL. So we've got our templates working. And let's begin to build this template out a bit more. So this project will be using Bootstrap. Let's go and download it. I'll come to the introduction and then let's copy the style sheet and place that here. And once our style sheet is added, just save the file and then we'll go back to the browser. And once we reload, we should see the styles from Bootstrap added. Okay, so at this point, we should now be able to build out our template. And I'm going to be using Bootstrap's code snippet for their navigation. I believe components, navbar, and then I'll copy all of that. And then I'll paste that here. And then we'll change certain parts of this. So I'll get rid of the navbar toggler button. 
I'll remove a number of these list items. So it should just be a div and a URL with two list items. The first link would be articles, which would be at the root of our blog. And then the next link item will be to add a new article. So I'll just save this and everything else should be okay. And uh, well, let's change this bit. And we'll change the name to my tech block. And let's see what that looks like in the browser. Okay, we get this. And I'll just fix the zoom to the default. So it should look like that. And then next, I create a, a container, a div with a class of container. Then I'll add a row. And then in this row, this takes a column. And I'll add the text center class to a line wherever text we place inside to the center. Let's add a paragraph. So that should give us a header and a footer. Then our body content will go here. So if I reload this, this is what we have right now. Okay, so this layout.jl file would act as a shell for the rest of our other views. So we'll be able to add a placeholder here which will change the content that's been displayed depending on depending on the page that's been shown on the screen. So we're gonna put a placeholder here, which comes with JL called block. And then the name of this block, we'll call it content. And then we'll close it off as such. And we'll just put a horizontal rule here to separate the main content area from the footer. So I'll save this and then I'll create a new JL template called articles and in here now because we're using the layout.jl as a shell we use another custom element called extend in the src attribute we need to define the file we are extending so layout.jl then secondly we we'll define that content block and here is where we specify the actual content that's going to be displayed so if I include my heading again hello world and save this and then in order to use this I'll come to routes and then I'll change layout to articles come over here and I reload the page and still works so that's good and let's build this out I'm going to use a jumbotron and then in that jumbotron I'll have a container set the margin bottom to that container all these classes are from the bootstrap framework by the way so you can look in the documentation if you need more information on that and we'll add a row then we'll add a column and in this column we'll have a heading one and we'll set the class to display one and we'll say my tech blog and then lastly a description so if i save this and i go to the browser and reload then we should have that and then lastly i will create another container i'll create a row that would center its contents and in that row we'll have a column then i'll add some margins on the top margin on the bottom so this section demonstrates what each article would look like each article will be a heading one in fact let's make it a heading two which will contain a link to the article and then we will have span containing the date of the article followed by a link to read the full article. So let's save and go back to the browser. And when I reload, it should look something like that. So I'll be duplicating this bit basically for each new article. So let me reload that. And as you can see for each article that's added, it's listed like that. And I'm gonna end the video here. I hope this was interesting and at least it whet your appetite a bit for the Angel framework. Do like this video, do share with others so that they can also get to learn a bit more about the Angel framework. Do subscribe and hit the bell notification icon so that you're updated when the next videos are released. If you've got any feedback, if you've got any comments, let me know down below. I do read them and I do try to respond. I wish you a happy new year from here on out. Thank you.